This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hello, welcome back to the Back to Basics series. Stop and chop technique is a popular technique among most cataract surgeons and certainly more so among the surgeons in the early part of their career. Today I am using this technique in one such eye and during the course of the video I will be sharing few practical tips so that the learning curve of the beginner surgeon will be shortened. Uh, this is a 60 year old lady with a dense mature cataract. The incisions are created, the anticapsule is stained, a dispersive ovary is placed in the chamber. I begin my rexis. I am using a forceps. I realize that I am not having a great control over the tear. So I am beginning to be a little bit more cautious and restrict myself to making a smaller rexis than what I initially started with. The idea was just to prevent the rexis from running away. So now we have a smaller eccentric rexis. I want to decompress the capsule bag before enlarging it. I am using the FACO probe to aspirate the overlying cortex and loosen the bag. Then. A tangential cut is made with the micro scissors. The flap is then held with the forceps and the rexus is then enlarged. Having a bigger rexus in such dense cataract does help. Now it's time to FACO. I begin by aspirating the overlying cortex. For sculpting, these are the settings which are being used. The first two small trenches are slightly wider which will allow the tip and the sleeve to have access to the deeper part of the nucleus. As I begin to sculpt, uh, let me pause and highlight two key things here. Number one, I am using the maximum preset energy during the forward stroke of sculpting. That is, I am pushing my foot pedal totally down. Number two, the chopper is stabilizing the nucleus during sculpting. So we need to remember that the nucleus should never be pushed or showed at during sculpting. By using the right amount of energy and by stabilizing the nucleus with the second instrument, we can create these trenches with the least amount of stress on the capsulozonular apparatus. The nucleus is rotated and the groove is elongated on the other side. Please note the position of the second instrument which is stabilizing the nucleus and also the energy being used during the forward stroke. It comes back to zero as the tip moves back. The nuclear material should be effortlessly melting in front of the tip as the groove is being progressively deepened. I have achieved around 80% depth and this should be fine. Now the key to achieve the lateral separation effortlessly is to have a deep groove and also to keep the two instruments which are used to separate deep in the groove. They have to be as deep as possible before moving them laterally. So if we can achieve this, we can get the crack effortlessly. Then I rotate the nucleus and repeat the same maneuver at the other end to achieve a complete split. The long chopper helps us to place it deep into the groove. Now moving on to the chopping maneuvers. The settings are changed. I prefer to use longitudinal energy in burst mode for this. The most important trick to achieve an effortless chop is to hold the nucleus in its center or we may call it the belly of the nucleus. So once we hold it slightly posteriorly, that is at this region in the middle, the grip is going to be very strong and chopping is going to be effortless. Now the most beginners make the common mistake of holding it very superficially which will make the chopping maneuver inefficient as the grip is going to be poor. So the message here is if you use the right technique of holding the nucleus the chopping maneuver is going to be effortless. So 
So once I have these six fragments, now is the time to consume them. The emulsification of the fragments is a relatively easy step for most beginner surgeons, but few important principles to follow. The amount of energy which is used has to be judicious, which should be low enough so that there is minimal lens chatter. One should always feel that he or she is in absolute control of the proceedings. Once you feel you are in control, you become confident of emulsifying the nuclear fragments in a relatively posterior plane, which would be very healthy for the corneal endothelium. Now please note the position of the chopper, which plays the role of a guard, preventing some of the fine fragments from flying away and hitting the endothelium. Whenever we have a big orexis, there's always this chance that some of the fragments escape out of the bag unintentionally, like this one. Now moving on to the last fragment. The power delivery is controlled using the foot pedal in such a way that the fragment just dances around the tip which is held at the pupillar plane before the fragment just disappears. So this ensures that we have absolute control over the emulsification of the fragment and it is being done at the right plane. I am using BSS to flush the posterior capsule to loosen out the cortex sticking onto it. There is very little cortex which is removed easily. The intraocular lens is placed into the bag. The OVD is removed, the case is done. Thank you for watching and hope this helps.